join me today. We are at Southern Kettle Rain State Forest, Scoopernong Springs Nature Trail, where springs bubble up from the sands. And I'm going to answer 10 questions from viewers and beginning shroomers uh, as we take a little walk in nature on this gorgeous late summer day. Join me. We made it everybody. We've topped 400 subscribers. Time for the mushroom jig. Thank you. So people ask me what kind of woods I should hunt summer mushrooms in, and here it is. Heavily oak, old growth, you know, first or second generation oak, white and red. That will give you all the tastiest mycorrhizal edibles you could ever want. Lobster, sweet tooth, black trumpet, chanterelle. Some of these mushrooms also can be found in the pines, but all of them can be found in the Midwest in a nice old growth oak forest. There you have it. Number one tip. Hey, Tattooed Granny, what about the different species of mushrooms edibility? Well, you're responsible for IDing them. Not me, not a book, not someone at a foray. It's great to combine all these uh, bits of information and make a positive decision for yourself. Okay, do it. Hey, Tattooed Granny, can I eat that? Maybe. I mean, sure, but you might die or get sick. So, number one rule, get the correct ID. My information might help, but it shouldn't be your only source. Good books, forays, study. You gotta do the work. And for edibles, once determined so, thoroughly cook, never eat raw. Top tips from the old lady. TG out. Hey, Granny, how do you find so many mushrooms? I walk and walk and then I walk some more. Key to finding mushrooms, how many miles you put on your boots and how many trees you check. A lot of the summer mushrooms that are mycorrhizal come back every year. So once you do find a tree that fruits, make sure you remember it. Dear Tattooed Granny, when is the best fruiting time for the mushroom I want? Well, that is a matter of experience. Some are summer mushrooms, some are fall, and some like morels are spring. Many of these mushrooms are activated to fruit by either a specific soil temperature or a change in soil temperatures or moisture. That's something you need to memorize. And believe me, there's a lot to learn. A lot of different species. Oh, TG, when's a good time to go mushroom hunting? Maybe after a nice rain, a few days after, that might spur mushrooms to fruit. The correct time of year, which, you know, you can learn based on what flowers are blooming, what kind of bird or reptile or amphibian activity is happening. Nothing can replace study. Here, somebody found a, a nice uh, sulfur shell and chopped it off. Heartache, right? You're competing against a lot of people in the public lands, which is all I hunt, and uh, it happens. If you're not finding shrooms, maybe it's nothing you did wrong. Maybe somebody beat you to it. ATG, hey, oh. Give me some good months to hunt mushrooms for the Midwest. Okay, morels April and May, chanterelles and black trumpets July, lobsters and sweet tooth August, hen of the woods and bluets 
aborted into Loma. Um, September, sulfur shelf, anytime. Lots of others. Granny, help! I found so many mushrooms. I can't eat them all. I've given them away to everybody who wants them. Now what do I do with what's left? Um, I recommend a cheap dehydrator. You can buy them at Costco, Farm and Fleet, sporting goods store sometimes. Uh, most mushrooms can be dehydrated in a few days. The other way to do it, air dry them for a day or two, vacuum seal them and freeze them. Also cooking and freezing. Get some ready for that recipe. Maybe a few months later. Oh, Granny, I got lost in the woods yesterday. I found my way out eventually, but ooh, it was scary. How do I prevent that? You can buy a compass and learn to use it. You can make sure you have an app on your phone that tracks back to your car and you mark it. Um, a good topo or trail map is irreplaceable. My mushrooms are so dirty. How do I clean them? Start with field cleaning. I use an Opinel number eight mushroom knife with boar's hair on one side and a knife blade on the other. Brush off all the dirt you can. Cut the end of the stipe or stem where there's dirt where it was connected to the ground. Before you put them in your basket, you won't spread the dirt. A quick rinse and tap in the sink and blotting with paper towels. Air drying for maybe an hour. A fan helps before you cook. the mushrooms are thoroughly wet. I do not cook them at this point. I let them air dry for a couple hours. I blot them with paper towels, wrap them in paper towels, and then um, let the air dry them for a couple hours. Okay. Mosquitoes, black flies, deer flies. Oh, the agony. Bug nets, clothing, hats, face nets. I like Natropel, um, Pickardin spray. Some people use DEET. It can melt Gore-Tex. Caution with that. But it works just as well as Pickardin. There are natural things. They just don't work as well. And remember, mosquitoes will bite your dogs too. There's some pet friendly um, insecticides out there. What I do, I use the Sawyer's uh, clothing treatment. It's a pyrethrin treatment. You can get it at Walmart for $14.99. Make sure you're not allergic. Um, you soak the clothes and then the bugs die that come in contact with it. Great to keep ticks off. Dear Tattooed Granny, what kind of first aid kit should I put together? We're hiking in the woods. Bare minimum, band-aids, some type of antiseptic spray, um, maybe some polysporin cream, I like wing closures in case you really cut yourself open. And uh, maybe some sterile gauze and some gloves. So Granny, I cooked up a choice edible. I'm sure I'm right. I'm sure it's the correct ID. And my tummy was upset all night. Why? Okay, well, there's a couple reasons this could happen. Um, maybe you didn't cook it quite enough. Maybe your genetics um, makes you sensitive to wild mushrooms. They have different chemicals in them than, say, store-bought ones. Maybe that particular mushroom um, doesn't agree with you. Uh, people have all kinds of different genetics that way. Uh, you still might have made an incorrect ID. Um, don't feel bad. Not every mushroom is for every person. Even the choice edibles, just like any food, can disagree with you or you can have an allergic reaction to. Um, the last thing is uh, some wild mushrooms absorb uh, pesticide runoff from farms or people spraying their yards. So try and avoid that if you can. And sorry that happened to you. Sometimes when you eat a choice edible, if you combine it with alcohol, um, it can make you sick too. Uh, every person's system is different. More questions? Pop them off in the comments. I 
Here we have an example of an Ammonita. Example of an Ammonita. Ammonita Vestorgia. The destroying angel. Deadly amatoxins. Kill you in about five days from liver failure. I mean, you might live if they can give you a, a nice liver transplant. Um, they have a bulbous base. That's one way to ID them. It's like, like a cup called a vulva, B-O-L-V-A. It's a partial veil. Usually there's patches on um, other species from this veil here. But this one is noted not to have that because it's pure white. So that's an identifying characteristic there. You don't ever want to consume this. You don't have to be afraid of touching it. Uh, one mycologist puts a piece in his mouth and spits it out to show you that you have to actually ingest and digest this to die from it. But it is poisonous deadly. Stay away from it. This is a good one, a good genus to learn. Flowering jewelweed. Crush up the green part, a little saliva, and you can put that on mosquito bites to stop the itch. Pink gills and a giveaway. This is the wild version of store-bought mushrooms. One of uh, the gills get dark. See how pink they are? They get dark once you pick them. Coming up in these springs. Epic. This is where spring water comes bubbling up from underground. My beautiful little watercress honey hole. We're gonna pick a little. Okay, I've got my waterproof boots on, and we are gonna pick some watercress here. Very carefully. Okay, there we go. Okay. This is watercress here. Not today, you need a plastic bag. Get a couple of these sprigs. You can cream this. My feet are getting cold already. Oh. Fresh and crisp. This is allowed in our state parks. It is a spring choking weed to our DNR, so they like it, actually, if we uproot it, which I don't do, but. Now, because of the little parasites and critters in the water, I cook this. You can have it in salads if it's like hydroponically grown, someplace safe. The wild stuff you gotta have caution about. So we're just gonna pick a few, enough for a meal. I don't have to be greedy. There. A little bunch. Here's our yummy watercress. Back in the back. Here are ripe elderberries. They're super good for your immune system. They make a great syrup. Uh, 
the leaves though and the stems you don't want to eat. Only the ripe purple berries. The bees love the goldenrod. your own wine. Yeah, rained here recently. Here's the pitter-patter footprints of the raindrops. Cool. Mushrooms all day long. Be the shroom. Oh, yeah. 